Well, hello, boys and girls, fellow Patreon members and YouTube followers. Uh, this is B Pal. This is Boric, Joe Boric, and I am Pal, Pearls of Wisdom. And we're coming to you after a uh, kind of a down day yesterday. Actually, I, I posted some ball picks, but they were like really loose and don't bet on them and stuff like that. But uh, we did get our Vegas, uh, what was it, Vegas pick yesterday over. Uh, the Dallas Stars, um, they Vegas looked a lot more like they were supposed to yesterday. Um, but for the most part, didn't put too many picks out yesterday. Today, on the other hand, we're looking at a lot of picks. If you don't know who we are, we are a betting group, and uh, we help people cap games, make, make money for themselves. And uh, that's what we'll be doing today. We got some baseball picks. We got a hockey pick. Um, so let's get started here, B. Oh, thank you, by the, by the way, for all the subscriptions and the following and the hitting of the like button. We love you guys for that. It helps out the algorithm, kicks it in the ass. You know what I'm saying? So thanks for doing that. Okay, uh, let's start out with uh, Marlins over Braves you got so far. Or Marlins versus Braves. Which one do you have? I guess I just gave it to everybody. Mar Marlins over, uh, yeah, Marlins over Braves. Um because the Braves have Tommy Malone pitching, who looked okay in Baltimore before he got traded, but then he got shellacked as soon as he got to Atlanta. Um, and he's just not really that good of a – he's just a guy that tries to finesse you, throws very soft strikes. So if you can't hit the corners, you're probably going to kill him. Uh, and the Marlins obviously have been a more productive team than people thought this year also, especially offensively. So Lopez has a very good whip. He only gives up about a hit an inning. So um, I think he's going to continue to pitch well, and that's going to put them over the top in that game. I think it's, that's a good play. You got a uh, getting nice juice on that. Um, pretty good spot. Uh, the Braves have been rolling pretty good. It could be tight, but... If you're going to be, even if it's close to 50-50, you're still getting pretty darn good juice on your coin flip. So I like it. Uh, Mariners versus Giants. You got to you got to play on that one? Yeah, I did the over, which that one's not really much. But, well, Tyler Anderson's struggling, so he's kind of based off of the pitching matchup. Marga Vincus is actually pretty solid. But that's more off of just how the Giants are rolling uh, and cruising right now in general. Where they're just hot, they're seven and three. They're on a four-game winning streak, and their offense has been very good. And they came back in their last game, so they keep finding any way possible to win. Uh, I just think their offense is still going to be too much. They also have guys that can hit lefties really well, and even though Marga Vink is just pitching well, he is a lefty. So I don't think that's the best matchup for him going up against a Giants team that has hitters that are literally just role players to destroy left-handers. So, like, that's probably not the best matchup for him. That's why I think the Giants are going to be able to get the over in that one. Yeah, the Giants have been playing with some really good energy, uh, very driven. Um, I've watched a couple of them, and they're having a lot of fun out there. They're pretty loose, looks like. The, 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 uh, they have managers the got them playing. Of the manager. Yeah, they have the personality of Gabe. Like, everybody seems to have the personality of Gabe Capper where he's serious when he's supposed to be serious, but most of the time he's kind of loose and free, like, 90% of the time. So. Yeah, which bodes well for hitters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you That's don't want to fight as a hitter. You have to be loose and free, yeah. Yeah, uh, believe in yourself. Yeah, I like it. Um, here's a kind of a simple play, I suppose. Um, Dodgers versus Diamondbacks. We actually might have a couple of plays here. What are you looking at that one? Yeah. Well, for that one, we did to the public, we gave out, um, the ML cause that's a pretty obvious one. The Dodgers should continue to cruise over the Diamondback. And then the under is a good play for that one. Cause you got Taylor Clark who pitched well in nine games so far, and then Clayton Kershaw is pitching like a Cy Young caliber candidate again. So uh, that's a good ca characteristic to have that game be an under because both pitchers are pitching only giving up about, well, per Kershaw is less than a hit per inning. And then uh, Clark's a little bit over a hit per inning. So the, I, I think they're going to win that game, but they're also going to get the under due to the pitching matchup. Yeah, I, and I was surprised to see that you're getting more juice on the under in this game. Um, 
I think it's worth the shot for sure. I don't think betters trust Taylor Clark. That's why. Even though he has the numbers, like I said, he's still an unknown commodity. Right. And normally big betting sites don't trust unknown commodities. Yeah, especially going up against uh, um, One of a the Dodgers festival. lineup that <laughs> is, that's batting 250 just about every single batter. Oh, yeah. Like, but he's also facing one of the best pitchers of our generation. So that could factor into it a little bit, too. Yeah. But, <laughs> but even I, if he does have a bad game, there's a pretty good chance that Kershaw is only going to be limiting them to maybe a run or two. So yeah. Dodgers are going to have to light him up pretty good. So that's pretty uh, – uh, yeah, I like that play for sure. Uh, um, so next – okay, Padres. We got lots of, lots of games here. Padres over Rockies ML seems like it's a pretty straight play. Yeah, the Padres, again, they're a team that's just been cruising. Uh, they're playing really well. Their offense is playing really well. Their defense is playing very well. Basically, their whole team is playing very well. Um, and they got Zach Davies, who's been one of the biggest uh, surprise pitchers in baseball this year. That's just looked really good. He's been a solid pitcher. He had a th- career 3.79 his entire career. This year, he's 6-2 and two with a 2.23 two, and a 9.93 walks per hits per innings pitch. So... Uh, yeah, I would say the Padres are going to win that game. Sanzatello is a good pitcher, but the Padres outmatch the Rockies when it comes down to the end of ball games. So that's going to that's going to make them win that game, I think. And then, it, first of all, Zach Davies is going to limit them. So if the Padres can jump on Sanzatello, Davies doesn't normally give up more than, like I said, two per game. So yeah, that. It's a yeah, it's a pretty solid. But I do, I have liked the way the Rockies have been go, have been playing this this season. They have been gutting out a lot of wins, but uh, pretty tough, uh, pretty tough pitching matchup on this. Yeah, I one. think the Rockies a decent amount too. It's just this game, I don't think they match up well at all. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't pick them in this. That's why I went Padres. I picked the Rockies for people sometimes, but not this time. <laughs> Then we got an interesting play, which shouldn't be an interesting play this year. It's been all the talk in the land, but uh, we got Jays and Yankees coming up on this on this card. Yeah, even though Roark's pitching, who obviously hasn't been as peachy keen as everybody in Toronto hoped he would be, um, but uh, he can still give you some innings. Hopefully he can kind of have a better start and start kind of balancing out as the stretch comes down. Otherwise, you're probably going to have to just put in a young guy over him in the playoffs. Um, but if he can start balancing it out and doing stuff, I think uh, they'll get the win. But the other side of it is the Yankees have so many injuries, they're not scoring that much. The Jays could easily win this game 7-5, to 8-9, to 9-8. to eight. Like, like their offense is doing really good that yeah. I think – they're finding ways to win every game. I think they're just figured out. They could probably win 15 to 14 if they had to with the way this team's playing. So, I mean, that's why I would put, I just, like the Jays, I'm just really, I just think they're a really confident bunch. They they have that young energy, too, that can never be stopped until usually the postseason. The only time you usually stop that young energy is when they have no postseason experience. And then somebody catches them then. But that's not for a while. That's not for three weeks still. So, Right now, I think they're going to keep cruising, and they're probably going to be one of the better teams entering, and then we'll see where their youngness can take them in the playoffs with really little to no experience. Yeah. But, this is a team that's also taking on the personality of its manager, too. Uh, exactly. Well, yeah, Montoya, yeah. he's a very good manager. He should, he'll be up there for manager of the year if they keep doing this. Yeah, he's he's been I, – I like him a lot. I think he's fantastic. I'd he's like great to at managing a pitching staff. You yeah. can have a bunch of people that have no idea what they're doing on the mound, and he'll be like, okay, you face this guy, you face this guy, put him over there, and somehow they look half decent. <laughs> like, yeah. They have like a career 17 ERA, and then he'll somehow make them look half decent. It's like, oh, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what great managers do. They make, uh, yeah. they get the best out of every guy that they have, and he certainly seems to be doing that in Toronto, which is good for me being a Jays fan. Uh, so, that's our ball picks. Now we'll get into the one hockey pick we have, and I'll be talking more on here because hockey is not really my. Did you want me to explain the one um, basketball pick real quick that I? Put oh up? right, sure. Yeah, I forgot to write down that basketball pick. Let's do the basketball pick first, sure. Um. Okay. I think the series has just seemed very back and forth, so I don't think that's going to stop in the Raptors and Celtics. So I believe the Raptors will figure out a way to win Game Six. 
And then game seven, as we all know, well, as all basketball fans know with Brad Stevens, he just screws with you and changes the system a bit and then revert it back. So you have no idea what the hell is going on. Um, so in game seven, they're, they're not going to win, I don't think. But in game six, I think they're force of game seven. I'm pretty confident in that, like 99% confident they would do that. So that's why I figured I'll put that in. This series has just seemed like one that's going to go to seven. So I think that's a pretty good uh, play there because you make some good bucks on that because the Raptors are obviously not favorited. So I think that's a pretty solid play. Yeah, Lowry's been playing awesome. That team's got a lot of guts, uh, a lot of pride, and well-coached as well. Uh, it's uh, well-managed as well. So um, I'm hoping you're right. Uh, this one I'm yeah. kind of throwing in your ball court because, of course, I'm a Raptors fan. Uh, I'd like to see them take it to Game 7. I'd like to see them win Game 7. They do seem like they're a little overmatched, but even if they do That's get why I don't think they'll win Game 7. Yeah, like I think they'll yeah. keep going back and forth, and then they'll be outmatching Game 7, like I said. But. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll go into the hockey pick, and this is where I'll be talking a, lot, a little more. I'm a little disappointed with myself. Uh, this is Tampa and the Islanders playing tonight. I'm a little disappointed in myself that I allowed myself to maybe overrate the Islanders um, with how tired they were going to be. I didn't put a bet in this last game, but uh, the last game, and I had in my mind I wanted Tampa PL, but I never put it out there. And it certainly was PL. They ruined them. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's hard to bet against trot, trot system. You never know what that can do. Um, there, there should be a little more rested here, but honestly, I don't think the Islanders are going to be able to catch up on their rest compared to Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay showed no rust this last game. Um, no, not at all. Not, not at all. So um, it's a question of Grice and uh, Farlamov. Uh, I imagine they're going to roll the dice with Farlamov in the next game. And uh, we saw with Philadelphia, the only reason why that went game seven was because they had Varlamov in. Tampa Bay is um, got a be- has a better roster than Philadelphia, except for well, maybe even goaltending. Um, is playing way better than Philadelphia played the Islanders. I I honestly think that uh, Tampa is probably going to sweep this series after seeing Game One. And I know I've had my argue um, the argument being that the Islanders were just tired and they're going to come back a lot harder in this game. And I think that's pretty likely that they will come back harder. However, I just think like we were just talking about with uh, Celtics and the Raptors, they're just overmatched in every aspect of the lineup here. Um, I'm going to take Tampa. And I haven't. I'm strongly even considering throwing it on a PL again. How about you? Yeah, uh, I don't think Tampa's going to lose. Other than I think the Islanders, like I said, will win one game because of the Islanders, and they find a way to win one game. Uh, other than that, I don't think they're going to look very good in the other games. I don't know if they'll lose eight to two, obviously, in every game. Yeah, but, but um, because that would be pretty pathetic at that point. But um. After the, the other thing is, after you lose eight to two, you don't normally come back from that that well. If you lose like four nothing, if you lose like four to one, like normally you have some spunk still. If you lose eight to two, you really have to find the fire in your belly again. Uh, you're kind of just like like just down and out after that. Yeah, Barry so, Trotz might give you help on that. And oh, he they- does, but the problem is. A coach can only do so much, even if you're a Hall of Fame coach, if you just got destroyed. Especially if you get destroyed tonight, I think they might get swept. Yeah. yeah. So and I think it's a very good chance that they will. And I think another reason for that is a lot of people people aren't, don't talk about a lot. And, every, and a lot of to do with the fact that Tampa collapsed against Columbus last year was that, is that Cooper is a very good coach. Very good coaches don't win all the time, and uh, but he is an extremely good coach, and I think he's going to show it here. Uh, he, it's not like he's a um, that much of a detriment to Tampa by any stretch of the imagination, uh, and I think he's going to show it here. So uh, I got Tampa. I'm leaning to the PL, and uh, I think it's 
going to, I got tap all the way actually yeah. speaking of uh, hockey just to um for people to say it if they want to follow my YouTube channel sports fanatic news I really like Jake Ottinger as a goalie who got a debut obviously made his debut in the third period um great game to be thrown into Western Conference final <laughs> hey kid yeah. um but um the uh I was going to do a video either today or tomorrow explaining his scouting report and saying what I think he'll be and all that good stuff. So whoever wants to catch that, uh, check out my Sports Fanatic News YouTube page. And I also might I, – I could share it in Patreon as well and post it on our thing. Uh, so I'll probably do yeah. that so you can see it. Um, but, yeah, check that out. For sure. And uh, always, as always, check out SteelFlyers.com. You can find all of our work there under Steel Flyers Friends. Um, and that site is going to be absolutely blow your mind crazy when it's uh, f- at its full uh, full capacity with what it's going to do. It seriously is going to be amazing. You're going to be able to go to every sport. Uh, you see writers for every sport, uh, every team on every sport, plus an ongoing um, uh, live stream that goes from morning to night is going to be placed in there apparent, uh, as well. It, it's it's revolutionary i think it's going to be incredible and uh i can't wait till it's up and you guys can enjoy it it's going to be so yeah you can check out all our stuff there um forget the patreon app go check our patreon out we're making money over there we're having a lot of fun i do lives every evening uh almost every evening i'm maybe uh, maybe maybe not every evening but for hockey and i started doing tennis now and we're having at least 90 percent of the evenings yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Just say you do them 90% of your evenings and then people can't get on you when you don't do it. (laughs) Yeah, I don't really. Yeah. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's so I'm having so much fun that uh, and uh, you will, too. We have a lot of laughs. We we talk about betting. We talk about the games. We talk about everything. So come on on and uh, enjoy that as well. That's our full 42. We've been B-Pow and this is Bork. I'm Pow. We've enjoyed your company today. Hopefully you're enjoying the picks. Get out there and make yourself a ton of money and enjoy the games. I'm going to take one from B. Enjoy the games there, boys and girls. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.